Okay, so continue, continue next talk. Okay, okay. Yeah, so my next talk um, stop, stop, stop. Okay. is talking about like, I also want to share about a bit about my experience over the last couple of years, you know, when we are always like making stuff. Generally, I make stuff because like uh, I like to make stuff. <laughs> right? I'm not sure who, who over here um, usually makes things for, make things for your own interest or purposes. Okay, yeah, most of you, right? So, so today I want to present a, a slide. <laughs> Yeah, a slight, a slight, uh, how would I say, uh, a proposal, but we'll talk more about that later. Right, so in general, when I observe around my community, you look at the people around you, right, you see the uh, hawker center, you know, you, you buy your food from people. How many people are actually, do you know out there actually make stuff or solve problems around them? Surprisingly, not many, right? It's, it's just like, I mean, this room is probably, you know, about like the 1% out of the 20% of people who make stuff in Singapore, right? And many people are, don't make stuff um, generally for various reasons. And it's just a aggravation, you know, I just like throw some number. I just suspect it's not a lot. <laughs> right? So this quote here is like what what do you want to make today? Because <laughs> it's a Microsoft event and they used to have a quote called Where do you want to go today? This is like uh, way back in the nineties, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So some of the things I make before um, like simple shelving, right? Why do I make simple shelving like this? It's really because there's a personal purpose. For example, over here, I want to practice cutting slots using a uh, electric coping saw. Usually you want to cut a slot, you would use some better tool, not an electric coping saw. But then, yeah, I just managed to do it. So it's more like practice, right? And hold on, I might have missed a slide. I don't know. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, so typically I notice there are several phases of making. The first phase, obviously, is that you make things for self-learning. Okay, I want to learn about leather working, right? You go and buy some leather stuff, you cut, you make some nice bag. If you want to learn more about, you know, um, maybe soldering, you try to pick up soldering yourself, right? So the first level is always, you know, making things for self-improvement. Okay, the second level I realize is that you make things to improve your processes. Right, as the more I do woodworking, I realize that using hand tools just totally doesn't cut anymore. You start buying electric tools, you start making your own tools, um, you start organizing your tools. Uh, like recently, there's a news about SMRT and how they adapted the Kaizen thing. But then you realize that as makers, you guys probably already do it at home, right? Um, and of course, the third thing is that when you start making your own tools, you start doing things so that your processes are faster. You, you can do things faster, you can make things faster. It saves your time. Right, the next, then moving forward, the next level is to make things for others, right? Maybe someone in the community, right? Um, those PCB sharing websites, they make a circuit board or something and they share it up there, right? You are helping other people save time, design time or sharing your designs with people. The last two phases is really about like solving real problems, solving problems not in the maker community, but solving problems of people who just don't make stuff or are too busy to solve their own problems. You know? Um, and of course, the last one is to solve global problems, but I'm not sure if anyone is actually there yet. Yeah, but eventually some of us will be there to solve global problems. For example, one of the things that I made in the, uh, recently, right, is a pull down drill. I think I can play this video here. Right, why, why I really do this basically because like when I do a lot of woodworking, I find that I keep changing bits. I, I have like three to four electric drills because I, changing bits waste time. So I have this thing where, you know, I can, um, is powered permanently so I don't recharge the battery. I just attach the drill bit permanently. Every time I want to drill something, I just pull it down, drill, I let go, it'll go back up by itself. <laughs> yeah, so these kind of things, you know, um, it's easy to make, it saves my time in making. So like maybe the time taken to drill a hole in wood it used to be like maybe a couple of seconds, now it's maybe reduced to like one second. Yeah. Right, so, so my first, first point I want to encourage everyone today is really to solve real problems in life where you, um, when, when we see other people complain, potentially when they complain, right, some people think, oh, it's very negative, they are not, they are not um, you know, looking at the bright side, but when someone complains about something, it means that there is a problem to solve. Right? If 100 people, if 1,000 people complain about the same thing, it means that it is an important problem, right? Very often people, you know, hear people in Singapore say that, oh, uh, you complain about transport, whatever, but people complain for a reason, right? And the reason is real, okay? so. Um, in, in school, we typically think about like you know uh, learning. Outside school, you talk about self-learning, 
But the real test outside school, there's no exam, but the real test outside school is how much value you bring to others, how much, um, what problems outside your own world do you, do you actually solve, right? Because your skills in your own world helps yourself, but if you can translate the skills to solve, um, yeah, to solve problems outside your house, outside your family, yeah, that, that is a really a different level. Right, so the ability, what I think personally think recently, uh, yeah, it's just a recent thing, you know, I think that the ability to build stuff or to solve people's problems is actually a gift because there are many other people out there who do not have, is it next slide? Yeah, who do not have the finances, right? We are fortunate to be pretty well off to be sitting in a Microsoft building today. There are many other people who cannot even afford long pants, right? Or do not, can't afford, afford time because they are busy working uh, two jobs a day, two shifts a day, right? There are people who have no energy because you are uh, somewhat ill, you know, you're always in bed. There are people who are not well educated enough to be able to make their own decisions in life, to make changes to their own life. But what I observe, personally what I observe is that there are many people out there who are stuck in a psychological loop that they are unable to further improve their own life to help themselves because they have, they are limited, you know, not may not be just psychologically, but the amount of things they have experienced in life. Right, and the second point I want to make is um, typically, right, when we build stuff, failure is normal. Whenever you see me post something on Facebook or something I built, you don't see what happens behind the scene. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, you probably, okay, let's say a certain motor driver, it works, but there's probably a lot of burn parts, a lot of magic smoke around. <laughs> Um, so in, in general, in the whole universe, when, you, when I think back about the various things that I do, right, is that most of the things I do don't matter. You can throw it in the bin. It doesn't matter right, to the rest of the world. No one cares. Right? No one really cares about what you do in your own home, in your own garage. Right? But why do we still do it? It's really because we want to practice. Right? We do it for ourselves. That's fine. Practicing and perfecting your own skill is important. It's an important first step because, you know, let's talk about this later. Because if you, you must be able to be an expert at what you do before you can help others, right? So it's something I want to share. Uh, this was the first time I made an audio circuit uh, a while ago, I think about two years ago, right? And you know, it was just a project that one day my friend talked about you know, some, some need for some audio stuff. And I just jumped into it and just like designed, uh, uh, tore apart a Chromecast audio, right? To figure out what uh, chips they use um, and, and learn more about like, you know, the, the plus minus biasing of all, how do I say, yeah, reverse biasing of the amplifiers and those kind of stuff, right? It's very, and actually this, this did not work. It looks nice, but it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work without some uh, extra soldering and fixing, right? But the point is to not stop there, but be able to learn more about, for example, audio circuits, you know, and bring the experience. And in future, you can do something else similar, but may not be the same thing. The more you do something, right, I think most of you will probably agree, the more you do something, the more efficient you get at it, the faster you do it, right? Maybe, you know, let's talk about uh, laser cutting, right? Your first project, you probably spend many hours staring at it, um, yeah, fooling around the equipment or burning something, right, and it doesn't work. Um, second attempt, you would probably be more proficient, right? And third and fourth attempt, you start going out of the zone and be able to do something you know, far, far more advanced than you would actually imagine you could do and this really extends to everything else even when you talk about physical abilities etc right but when it comes to making it's also important right it's also important that you do not get caught up doing the same thing one of the mistakes that are made for example in woodworking is repeating the same thing and again and again sometimes you can call it insanity but that's something that you shouldn't do right because you should really when you do something repeatedly, you should really be finding out other methods of doing the same thing. Doing the same thing is fine, but you have to explore and use other methods because it may come to a point in the future where you no longer have the same tools, you don't have the same environment, you no longer have the same requirements. Right? And maybe, for example, if I, I, I used to do fine soldering, but now I'm older, right? my hands are not so stable. So I no longer can solder like 0204 tiny SMD things with bare hands. Right? So, yeah, so in general, like, what I, what I feel, you know, that time is limited, we need to, when we want to do things, we have to do things fast, we have to do things with measurable benefits, and we have to iterate more frequently and improvise so that we can get better faster. 
So yeah, just TLDR, end of the day, you know, these are the main two points that I want to I've been focusing on. Um, and can anyone guess what is the head fake in the title? The title was, can anyone recall what the title was? Make a difference? Yeah. So it really is supposed to be make a difference, but I thought it was too corny, so <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So any questions? No. Okay, yeah.